Welcome to a new video. I want to talk about my experiences of using an iMac computer. So back in 2000, I used a one of those uh, Bondi iconic looking iMacs. It was the graphite version. It had a processor of 333 megahertz, 10 gigabyte of um, hard drive space, and I think it was about uh, 10 gigabyte of RAM as well. Anyway, um, I used it for editing videos using Final Cut Pro and it's a fantastic um, system. Uh, the processor was one of the older G3 processors um, but it was quick enough to use Final Cut Pro. I used uh, Firewire, um, used um, you know Firewire camcorder and it was pretty good for doing videos and I really enjoyed using that computer system. The operating system was pretty good as well. Soon after that um, at some point I decided to get one of the G4 uh, flat screen ones and they look pretty nice um, here's a picture of one um, and it was pretty good it wasn't the fastest machine on the world but I always found the operating system of the IMAX very intuitive very easy to grasp um, and everything is bundled together so providing you've got a DVD super drive and you've got iDVD, you can create a DVD quite easily. So that was pretty good. And then some years after that, um, I got one of the new i5 flat screen ones. So some years after that, I decided to get myself a i5 processor, quad core. Um, I got about 8 gigabyte of RAM. It was the 21.5 inch screen, so it was the smaller version of the new iMac. It was the most I could afford, and I spent about three years making these YouTube videos with that, that computer. Um, the problem with that computer is the 8GB of RAM generally is soldered onto the motherboard, so you can't upgrade it. So if you do want to get one of those smaller iMacs, you need to make sure you get about 32GB of RAM pre-installed. and Then that should be sufficient to do anything you want to do. And then, soon after that, I decided that I needed a bigger screen. Yes, it's true, you can, you can attach external uh, monitors, um, bigger ones, but the problem is it was 21.5 inch screen, and it would look odd if you put a bigger screen next to it. So at some point, I decided that um, I needed the bigger one, which is the 27 inch version. However, that one is user friendly in terms of upgrading the RAM, so there is a Part on the back that allows you to put 32 gb of RAM in. Um, I couldn't really afford all that RAM, so I decided to put 24 in it, and um, that was more than sufficient for what I needed. Um, but it comes to the point where there's something that most people don't actually know. That yes, iMacs are truly brilliant, but truly great at upgrading the operating system whenever you need to. Um, more than enough processing power in these uh, systems to do video. Um, they might struggle a little bit doing 4K video, however they are more than sufficient for everyday use, such as anyone doing a photography channel, anyone who wants to do a bit of video. Um, Final Cut Pro for me has to be the operating system of choice. Yes, there are other uh, over, um video editing programs you can get such as uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, Avid Express, Sony Vegas and some lower end ones, uh, Pinnacle I believe came out with some budget ones um, but for the most part the serious ones you want to be looking at if you're going to do edit video is going to be Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro X, um, Sony Vegas um, and there are others out there obviously. Um, but what, you, what you've got to think about with the iMac is it's not that brilliant for upgradability. Um, for example, if the hard drive fails, you're going to have to get the screen taken off. You're going to have to get all the components taken out. And you're going to um, have to obviously get the hard drive replaced. Put all those stuff back on without damaging the system. Now, engineers consider this a 4.5 out of 5 in difficulty. So I don't recommend it's something anyone does themselves. In fact, 
it would be pretty foolish to try and do it yourself because of the complexity. And another thing I want to touch on, and I don't think many people actually have said this online, but um, after the uh, G4 um, flat screen iMac that came out, um, the, the Apple decided to change the internal components. Um, I believe it was after uh, 2008 um, when they started making the iMacs very thin. They started installing what I would consider laptop components in the actual iMac. The problem with that, and I don't think many people actually know this, is laptop components are very fragile, first of all, not very hard wearing, and very easily to break or fail. Um, if you ever open up a, an old laptop, just have a look at the components and compare it to a desktop PC that you, yeah, that you might have. Um, one of the main issues is the 2.5 inch um, rotary hard drives um, tend to be slower than their desktop counterparts and they tend to fail a lot easier. The main reason for that is heat dissipation. On a 3.5 inch hard drive, the heat dissipates a lot easier than say a 2.5 inch hard drive does because it's got more surface area. Because it's bigger, they can afford to have more hard wearing components in there than say a small tiny 2.5 inch hard drive. So this is the reasons why I feel the shelf life of the newer iMacs is certainly a lot less than say the older iMacs were. So this has caused me to think about my iMac that I've been using for my videos on a regular basis. And I got to the point of thinking, what happens if the hard drive fails? Because surely, if you were to take off the screen and the internal components, and a professional was to do that, it's probably a full day worth of work. I'm sure Apple would charge a fortune to do it. The cost of putting a hard drive in there, you might decide to put an SSD, and that's another thing I want to talk on about. People think SSDs are the be and end all, they're the great, they're fantastic. They're not as good as people think they are. The thing with SSDs, they do wear out. Sure, they're more secure, more hard hardy, more hard wearing. Say so if you drop your laptop with an SSD, it's not going to do much to the hard drive, but if it's a conventional hard drive, it could da get damaged and it would stop working. The thing with the IMAX is um, even if you put an SSD drive in there, after three years it would probably fail. I have used an SSD 2.5 inch drive in the laptop and after three years it gave up the ghost. That's roughly more or less what a conventional drive lasts in terms of length of time. Um, you'll get about five years out of a 3.5 inch hard drive generally speaking if you're using it heavily. Um, but you've got to remember hard drives as well as new hard drives, not just used or refurbished ones, can fail at any time. So that's just something you need to keep in mind. So what happens if you haven't got Apple Care, right, and your hard drive fails in your um, iMac, your modern day iMac, say 2013 onwards? Well, you've not got much of a comeback after your one year warranty has expired. Um, and that's the problem. Um, well, I think the older iMacs coming from, say, 2008, um, after 2008, uh, I think it was around 2009 when the new design started coming in, up to the present time, which is 2018, um, they decided to make the back of the iMacs very thin at the edges. Um, and then they started using what I would consider laptop components. So, the, the actual long longevity of the actual iMac is in, is doubtful beyond three years in my opinion that that is the case so this has prompted me into deciding to sell my iMac um, and what I'm going to upgrade it to or you might think it's a downgrade is a Mac Pro silver desktop um, 2009 I, they did actually build them up to 2012 Yes, I could get a modern day Mac Pro which costs about £3,000, which is a lot of money. Um, but for approximately £1,200 I can get an older Mac Pro and it's user upgradability. What that means is I can take a hard drive out, put it in whenever I want, so if something fails, it's easily repairable. 
user repairable. That's the key to the reason why I'm going to get rid of my iMac. So I just wanted to do a bit of a video to explain what, what, what I started with in my computing regarding Macintosh computers. Sure, I had PCs before that, um, but once I tried the, the iMac, I fell in love with the user interface. All the way back to OS 9, um, up to the present high Syria. Um, I just find the operating system fantastic. Let's just talk about viruses just before I end this video. Because people will say Macs can't get viruses. That's not entirely true. They can get viruses. I've heard stories of uh, multi-million dollar companies um, getting a virus on their servers through a Mac computer. Sure, the virus might not infect the Apple computer, but the Apple computer can pass it on to other computers within the same server. Um, and that can cost millions to uh, a big business. And before you think that Macintosh computers can't be infected and corrupted, believe me, they can be. Um, it's just there's not that many of them out there, but they are out there. <clears throat> so uh, an antivirus software is always a recommendation. I would certainly recommend you do get. There are Mac versions. Um, but <clears throat> touching on my, my subject matter regarding why I decided to sell the iMac is again it's just user upgradability if something fails is a major issue even if the processors on that machine which are fairly old in, which I, I've recently bought a 2009 Mac Pro obviously um, I can always take the tray out you know take the motherboard the processors out and put new ones in um, or refurbished one source for various from uh, resellers you know a, a good source for sourcing uh, used equipment is certainly eBay and Amazon you know check those guys out um, because you can get some good deals if you do have uh, a good look but I just wanted to do a video and explain why I decided to sell my Mac people will talk about say PCs are much better and I don't want to get into the arguments of uh, saying PCs are better than Macs, Macs are better than PCs sure PCs are, are great and fantastic for gaming, for that sort of thing, but I think when it comes to graphic intensive work, video editing, Photoshop, uh, photo manipulation, um, animation, I think Macs are the way to go. because They, they just work better. Um, and there's a reason why a PC, after, say, three years, it's more or less done. A Mac computer can last a good five to ten years, you know. Um, they just tend to be better made and they're optimised um, and the operating systems are always being updated and that's another thing that you need to keep in mind is Apple keeps a tight rein on its operating system and any bugs that come up or any <coughs> attacks or viruses that try and attack the operating system they develop ways of protecting the operating system against outside sources so that's one of, one of the main reasons why viruses are not that common because Apple does continually um, update new operating systems um, which which in, in itself helps protect you from viruses because the, if you're continually upgrading the operating system um, it's very hard for the virus um, hackers and makers to, to infect your operating system but I just wanted to do a video, an overview of where I started with my Apple computers um, and where I am now and uh, why well, decide to sell my iMac? Um, don't be put off buying an iMac. They are really fantastic for doing everyday work. But if you want something intensive and you need that video storage, and you need to be sure that if something goes wrong with your computer, you can quickly repair it. You know, just order a new hard drive, put a new operating system on it, install it, and it's done. And you can go back to work. Um, you know, I would certainly recommend a desktop um, computer over, say, an iMac for that purpose. But I think for everyday work, um, whether you just want to watch a bit of YouTube, you want to play a DVD, because it's nice watching DVDs on, on your iMac. And the new Retinas, um, although they don't come with pre-installed um, Blu-ray software, because Mac, Apple doesn't like to have Blu-ray on their systems for some reason. But you can get an external Blu-ray player and install some Blu-ray software and, and watch Blu-ray on your 5K 
the brand new uh, iMac that's just come out, I think um, from 2015 up to the present, which is 2018. Um, you will love the experience and you can connect at external speakers because obviously the iMac does have internal speakers but I always find external speakers better than the small ones that they put in the iMacs. Um, but it's not to say you won't enjoy working with an iMac um, for your everyday work but if it's upgradability you want I believe iMac is the way to go. Um, now Apple have come out with the dustbins um, ideally named <laughs> I don't think Apple calls them that but everyone else considers them a little dustbin which is basically a, it's about that size um, and to a large, large degree they are upgradable to a certain degree now you can upgrade the SSDs the, uh, you can put more RAM in them um, but where I think they, they don't live up to the older Mac Pros you know which look like a basically uh, an aluminium desktop um, is the upgradability of the graphics card you don't really have that option however I do know in the pipeline external um, graphic card upgrades are becoming available so you may be able to get one of those 800 or 900 pound um, you know graphic cards put it in an external caddy or box and run it through the Mac Pro, the modern day ones. But they are expensive, the Mac, new Mac Pros. They're at three thousand pounds, sorry. Um, where you can get an old two thousand nine um, Mac Pro for a, about one thousand pound to about fifteen hundred pound, depending on specs. Because my current system at the moment is a three point four gigahertz processor, i five running with four cores. Now I've managed to get hold of a Mac Pro that's running at 2.94 gigahertz, right? Which you might think, oh, that's slower speed. Why would I want to get that? But it has 12 cores, two processors. Um, so it might, on paper, have a bit slower RAM at 1333 megahertz um, and have a slower processor, but it has 12 cores in there. So I think. Anyone who is interested in video work will like the idea of having the ability to put four hard drives in the system. So this is the reasons why I've decided to sell my iMac. Hope this video wasn't too boring. Um, but I just wanted to say, don't be afraid of the Mac OS if you've never tried it. It is a really good intuitive system. For someone who wants everything that's all in there, it's great. Surely you can go down the PC route and look for the various components and have to more or less build it up yourself. Um, the thing and the beauty with the Mac OS it's all there ready for you. You don't have to tinker with it. But for me, um, video storage is an issue. Um, sure, you can get USB 3 hard drives and Thunderbolt hard drives that can be plugged in to the back of your iMac and use that as storage. And I did that with a 2TB uh, Seagate external hard drive, USB 3. No problems at all accessing my data or using the data on that hard drive to edit with. It was more than quick enough and fast enough and responsive enough to, to do anything I wanted it to do. The only problem is my concern of what happens if the hard drive on the iMac fails. Then more or less either it's selling it as parts on eBay an expensive repair job for Apple to put a new hard drive in there or do it myself which it is possible you know there are there are if you do your research online you all you have to get is some suction cups um, various bits and bobs to actually open up and take the screen off uh, take the parts out put a new hard drive in put the parts back in put the screen back in with suction cups reseal it make sure it seals on there and hope you've not damaged anything. Um, it's certainly something I would shy away from doing and I'm someone who has upgraded PCs and built PCs. When I looked at the complexity of what it takes to do that on an iMac, um, I decided against it. Uh, it's not something I would want to try. Um, so, hopefully this video was a bit educational about, the, about iMacs, how useful they can be. 
Um, but fortunately, um, if if you are someone who who do, uses a lot of storage devices, I think it could be potentially a problem for you if you did think about what if the hard drive on your iMac failed. So thank you for watching. Have a nice day.